right, I think I'm live. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to my kitchen. My name is Hannah and I am a nutrition educator with Cornell Cooperative Extension of Jefferson County. Today is another video in our series, What Can I Cook With? where I take ingredient suggestions from the community and show you some different things you can make with them. So, so far we've cooked with lentils, canned tuna, canned meat or chicken, red cabbage, and quinoa. And I might be forgetting some in there, uh, but you can go ahead and check out all of our past videos on our YouTube channel. So today's recipe is kind of a two for one deal because we had a request for how do I cook with chickpeas? And we also had a request for how do I make it vegan? So today's recipe will be some vegan sweet potato chickpea patties, um, but I'll also tell you how you can make them non-vegan if you maybe don't have the ingredients to make them vegan um, or just don't really feel like being vegan tonight. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna show you how to prepare your sweet potatoes. I've already got one of my sweet potatoes. I've washed it, I've scrubbed it really well, so it's nice and clean. And I'm just gonna prepare it in the microwave. So a potato for this size will probably take about five to seven minutes. I'm gonna start by putting it in on high for five minutes. And this is a really fast, easy way to cook sweet potatoes. Um, if you don't have to turn your oven on, you don't have to turn your stove on, you can just do it in your microwave. So I'm going to go ahead and put it over here. So five minutes on high. Right. And while that's getting going, I'm going to go ahead and mush up my chickpeas. So I made my chickpeas from dried. What you would do if you wanted to do it in that method is you would take your dried chickpeas, you submerge them in water. So just put them in a big bowl like this, put water all the way up to the top uh, so they can really absorb it and have room to grow. Soak it for eight hours. Then you can go ahead and drain them, give them good rinse to get off any of that lingering starch. And then you boil them in water or more like simmer them in water for about an hour. So it's a little bit of a lengthy process. Uh, you definitely have to prepare a day in advance, but canned chickpeas work just as well. Uh, canned chickpeas are great because they actually lose very little nutrition uh, when they are canned. So I'm going ahead and mashing them up. Oops. This will release um, some of their starches, break them down a little bit. That way when we are cooking them in our pan, we don't have little chickpeas rolling everywhere. So I'm just using a potato masher. You could use um, the bottom of a cup. You could put them in a Ziploc bag and have um, yourself or a child squishing them down. The one thing though, if you are using canned chickpeas, you are going to want to go ahead and give them a good rinse. So they've seen in studies that rinsing your canned goods will remove up to 40% of their um, added sodium in there. That's always good, you try to reduce them. All right, so now it's been about two and a half minutes on my sweet potato. I'm gonna go open it up and just flip it over. That way it helps it cook a little evenly, cook faster. And then it's gonna keep going. So I wanna mash these up as much as possible. Again, just to help with the binding of our patties. And that way we're gonna get kind of equal bites of sweet potato and chickpeas when we eat them. So chickpeas are a really good source of fiber, um, folate, and they even have some heart healthy fats in them. So monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats, which is pretty cool. I also, I just learned this when I was looking up fun facts for this recipe, I guess. 
Um, roasted and ground chickpeas have been used as an alternative to coffee for centuries. So a caffeine-free alternative. And now I'm very curious to try it. If you've tried it, will you leave me a comment in the chat box? I wanna hear what it tastes like. <laughs> if you have questions about this recipe though, or requests for other ingredients you'd like to see me cook with, you can also leave it in the chat box. I am keeping an eye on it. I'm happy to answer any questions as we go along. This is pretty well mushed. I've got mostly mushed and halved chickpeas in here. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next step. As I mix all of our ingredients together, the chickpeas will break down a little bit more. Chickpeas are also a really good source of protein, which make this a great uh, meatless dish. Don't want any chickpeas to go to waste. So I did cook some sweet potatoes in advance, just so we didn't have to be microwaving all night long. And see these, I pierced them with a fork. They're nice and soft. If you didn't want to cook them in the microwave, you could steam them in a steamer basket on your stove. You could also bake them in your oven. Um, about three, 375, 400 degrees. And you just want to cook them until, like I showed you, the fork will easily pierce the skin. See, it's just going right in. And it makes them really easy to peel, too. You can see I'm just, just tearing this skin off. And the skin, it can go in the compost. If you wash them really well, you could nibble on them, make them into baked potato skins even. All right, let me go check on my third sweet potato. So go ahead and see if it's, if it's done. Uh, nope, it's not as easily pierceable. On the bottom, it kind of is. We'll go ahead and rotate it and I'll put it back in uh, for one more minute. And we'll just keep cooking it in one minute bursts. Just be warned, depending on what plate you're using, make sure it's microwave safe. Uh, it still might get hot though. I'll go ahead and start mushing these in together. So sweet potatoes are also a really great source of fiber, which has been linked to lower risk for diabetes and heart disease. And it also fills you up. So it keeps you feeling full, which is great. Can increase your gut health as well. Sweet potatoes are also a fantastic source of beta carotene, which is converted by your body into vitamin A. I think it's, um, I'm not sure, but I think one sweet potato has like 200% of your, your daily value, your daily needs. So it's a really great source. And then it's also got vitamin C in it and potassium, which our body also needs. Not sure if you can hear my microwave going off, but I'm gonna go check it again. And I'll take my fork over there with me this time. Yep, so it's looking softer. Just gonna let it go a little bit longer. So one minute more should just about do it. I'm starting to get my mixture here. You can see it's it's wet, it's already starting to hold together. And go ahead and add in one small chopped onion. I'm sorry I never demo the onion for you, but it's probably better this time. I really cried a lot for this one. <laughs> and then I've also got two cloves of minced garlic here. You could add more or less garlic if you like. The one thing I will say about the onion though, try to chop it fairly fine. That way when it cooks, you don't get these giant chunks of onion in there and it'll help it cook more evenly. 
I'm just using to use my hand, give it a quick little mix, help break it up a little bit more. So I used the equivalent of one can of chickpeas. So that's about one and a half a cup. I'm using three sweet potatoes, about medium size, medium, medium large. But you could scale this up or down. If you don't have three sweet potatoes, just use one, just use two. It's no big deal. I'll show you some of the things you can adjust so that you get the consistency you want. All right. Yep, nice and soft. The skin isn't as tender just because of the cooking method. If you wanted a sweet potato that you could uh, just eat for dinner, maybe put some beans or something on it, and you wanted to eat the skin, you could wrap it in a paper towel. But since I'm just tearing the skin off, I wasn't too worried about that. Pop this off. Just give it a good peel. Again, it is pretty hot at this point, so just be warned. It did just come right out of the microwave. And there we go. See, and it broke down just as easily as our other sweet potato. I got a couple more ingredients to add in. I've got some breadcrumbs. If you are looking to make this vegan, just making sure to read the labels on all processed foods. Um, sometimes they, they put things in there that you don't necessarily expect. And that's the same if you have other allergens as well, allergies as well. So quarter cup. If you are gluten-free, you could pulse up some oatmeal into a fine meal and use that instead. Or, of course, just make your own gluten-free breadcrumbs or purchase them. I'm going to add in one teaspoon of um, my ground cumin. About that much. I'm okay if it's a little bit heaping, this is a good flavor. And I'm gonna add in one tablespoon of dried parsley. If you have fresh parsley, that would be great as well. I would use two tablespoons though. But since dried, it's a little bit more concentrated, we're just gonna cut it down. Add in a half of a teaspoon of my smoked paprika. You remember I like a whole lot. You could substitute in your normal paprika, but I think the smoked really gives it a depth, a complexity of flavor that's needed. And then I'm just gonna add in a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. Again, this is the one that I'm not gonna measure over my bowl because I don't want to over measure and have the excess go in my bowl. All right, and then the last thing I'm going to use is called a chia seed egg. So before I get show you that, I'm going to go ahead and get my pan started. If you're cooking with cast iron, it takes a little bit longer to heat up. I'm just going to get it going. And I'm going to put a dollop of canola oil in there. About a tablespoon. All right. So for my binder, you could use either one whole egg and just add it in and mix it up. Or if you're looking to make it vegan, you could make what's called a chia seed egg. So I've got two and a half tablespoons of just plain water in here. And I've got ground chia seeds. So you might see these at your supermarket. They might come pre-ground or they might come uh, in... The whole form where they look like little black seeds. So I'm going to add one tablespoon into my water. And these will get, 
they get kind of gummy, which helps them serve as the binder. You could also use flax seeds for this purpose. The one note I will say about buying your chia seeds pre-ground is they can go rancid, similar to how nuts, the oils in them will go rancid. Chia seeds have those same oils, so they will also go rancid uh, if you don't use them. So I would say if you're buying them ground, don't buy more than you can reasonably use in a month or two. And you can see how, how thick that's gotten. And this is gonna serve as our binder. Again, you could use an egg. Go ahead and add that in. Okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and dig in and get my hands dirty. So I'm gonna go straight into forming them into patties. So I will be pan cooking these in my skillet. You could also bake them. I would bake them at 375 degrees for about 20 minutes, flip them, cook them for 20 minutes more. So it'll take a little bit longer. When we're pan frying them, they're only gonna take maybe eight minutes total, four minutes on each side if that, depending on their size. All right, so got this well mixed, well incorporated. The nice thing about making this vegan is you don't have any raw animal products to worry about. So if you wanted to give it a taste at this stage and check on the seasonings, you could definitely do that. Obviously, if there was a raw egg in there, you wouldn't want to. So then I'm gonna take about a quarter of a cup of a size and similar to I think in our tuna patty video, we're just gonna form them into our nice patty shapes. And you can really vary this depending on what you're making them for. So you can make itty bitty ones if you're doing sliders or more of a fritter situation, or you can make them bigger like a burger veggie patty, something like that. I'm just going to demonstrate with two how to cook them. Let me angle you over here. So I've got my pan. It's on about medium high. You don't want them to cook too fast. All right. Let's go ahead and add it in. You hear that nice sizzle? That's going to give us a nice crispy outer layer. And there's just enough oil on there so that the pan won't stick to the fritters. The fritters won't stick to the pan. The nice thing about my kitchen is, <laughs> I don't know if it's a nice thing always, but it's slightly sloped. So any excess oil runs to the far side and won't get on my patties. You could mimic this if you wanted just by tilting it. And then once these patties are done, if you need to re-oil it, you just kind of run it around. Up a little bit. So you've got these cooking in here. So I found that sometimes I will have vegetable patties that the exact same recipe, they'll work really well in one kitchen and then in the next kitchen, they just fall to pieces. If you know what that feels like, <laughs> These ones are pretty good. You wanna look for it to be nice and moist, like the sticking together, but you can also adapt in the moment. So if you find that it's too moist and is just falling to pieces, you could add some more breadcrumbs, you could add some gluten-free flour, you could add some normal flour, just to let it stick together a little bit more. If you find it's too dry, you can add another egg. If you're using eggs, you could add another chia egg. If you're doing this vegan, you could even add just a little bit of water. A lot of it depends on the moisture content of your chickpeas versus the moisture content of your sweet potatoes. So as you can imagine, there can be a lot of variability in there, especially depending on if you rinsed your chickpeas right before using them 
versus letting them sit out. So these are some ways that you can kind of adapt and they will work for other veggie burger recipes as well. Generally, uh, meat burgers do not have the same issue of not stick sticking together um, because they have so much so, uh, fat and moisture in there. Go ahead and try to flip these because they're smelling nice and crispy. All right. I don't know if you can tell, it's got a nice little bit of a golden color right here. It's a little bit stiff, but I'm actually gonna wait to flip this one. I want it to be a little more color on it. If no matter what you try, your mixture just won't stick together in patties, what I like to do and what I have done before is just scramble it up. It doesn't need to be in patty form. You can kind of turn it into a sweet potato and chickpea sloppy joe if you like, like we did last week um, with pinto beans. Again, just, just experiment with it. Um, you want it when you grab it, like I showed you, that you can form into a patty. If it doesn't, you know that once you put it in the pan, it's just gonna fall to pieces. So you wanna try to correct for the moisture content before you put it in the pan. And again, that's by adjusting the breadcrumbs and the egg or whatever other liquid you're using. So I think these actually work, work really well, not just as patties on buns in the traditional sense, but as like croquettes for a salad, um, making them maybe a little bit smaller than this and putting them on a fresh salad. Arugula is really nice um, or more of like a, a peppery, slightly bitter green because it will balance out the sweetness and the smokiness of the sweet potatoes and the smoked paprika. And these would also be really good if you drizzle some lemon on them. Sriracha. Right, so you can see this one does have a little bit more of that browning on them. And this one I'll probably just flip back and just make sure it's nice and toasty on each side. The nice thing about these veggie burgers is you, because they don't have egg in them or any other animal product, you don't really have to worry about food safety and cooking them up to the correct temperature, especially since we've been following food safety guidelines using scrubbed sweet potatoes, washing our hands, all that good stuff. So these ones, we're just looking for them to get nice and crispy on the outside. And we would like them to be warm on the inside. I think it's a little misleading if you bite into a nice warm crispy patty and then on the inside it's just this cold potato-y mixture. So like I mentioned before, you could use other beans in place of the chickpeas, just making sure you mash them up like we did these so they stick together. I wouldn't really substitute anything else for the sweet potatoes though. Um, the sweet potatoes have kind of the right sweetness, the right starch to keep them sticking together and also give them a good flavor in a way that the white potatoes just wouldn't as much. Hmm, go ahead and flip this one. Yeah, so this one stuck to my pan a little bit. I might, I'm gonna scoot it onto some oil so it doesn't stick as much. And then you can just continue to cook these. These also work really well if you want to freeze them so if you're freezing them, you could maybe cook them a little bit of a way just so they get that nice crispy outer layer to keep them together. Put them on a baking sheet, pop them in your freezer. Once they're frozen, you can just combine them into a Ziploc bag. And then to heat them up, you can either warm them in your oven on 325 degrees for about 15 minutes, um, making sure that before you take them out, you either take the temperature or cut into them and see if they're warm or you could use them in, heat them up in the pan. It would just take a little bit longer. If you're interested in more sweet potato recipes, I have a really delicious uh, sweet potato shepherd's pie recipe that is on the Cornell Cooperative Extension of Jefferson County's um, website under nutrition resources, nutrition video resources. So go ahead and check that out. Um, that's been a really fun recipe that we've been making a lot around here. Um, the sweet potatoes on top just give it a completely different flavor and um, add a lot more veggies to it. So you're getting a lot of good nutrients and all that fun stuff. All right.
Well, thank you all so much for joining me tonight. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the chat box or as a comment under this video, and we'll be sure to check them and get back to you. If you have watched this video all the way, I would really appreciate it if you could fill out the survey that's in the description box at the bottom. Um, it is a Qualtrics survey. It's just gonna ask you a few basic demographics questions, how you heard about us. Um, it helps us know that we are reaching our community, determining if we need to offer additional programming and it lets us know you a little bit more. So we really appreciate that. I don't think I have anything else to tell you about this recipe, but I hope you go ahead and make it. And if you do, please share a picture either in the, I think you can in the comment box on YouTube or send it to us on Facebook. We always love to see how people make these recipes their own, especially if you play around with this or how you serve it. We love to see that. All right. Well, thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you next week for another mystery ingredient.